Vince Williams is going to go to All-Star Weekend. Now, what a great thing for him. Kudos to, to Vince Williams Jr. You know, um, he was an injury replacement on the Panini Rising Stars. He'll get a chance to be part of the All-Star Weekend Showcase. Hey, Grizzlies fans, be sure to tune in to Grizzby, where the panel and I break down all things Grizzlies and take a look at the rest of the NBA as well. The show is live every Wednesday, 2 p.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. Take your fandom to the next level with the official Grizzlies app. Go all access and behind the scenes. It's got to be heavy defense. That's where it starts for us. Personalized to where you are and who you are. Get easy access to ticketing, the game day guide, and your own app customization right at your fingertips. Upgrade your experience and download the Grizzlies app today. Did you do anything in that St. Joe's game? No, I was strictly playing defense. Delonte West was tough. That's a pro. Oh, my God. That step back. With that oh, wait, hold on. 40 minutes. You didn't even get a rest. No, I you played, played the whole 40. game. Six for 11 from the field. That was me. 12 points, six rebounds, five assists. Oh, I was nice that game. <laughs> I thought I ain't getting double figures. The Chris Vernon Show, presented by Caesar Sportsbook, live weekdays at noon on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. It's more fun to be there live to see the Memphis Grizzlies hit the court all season long. From the electricity and FedEx Forum to the highlight reel plays, there's nothing quite like Grizzlies basketball. As the official marketplace of the Memphis Grizzlies, Ticketmaster gets you in with a huge selection of seats. So get off the couch and into the stands while you still can. Score tickets today at Ticketmaster.com. That's Ticketmaster.com. From the Bill Ford Tough Studio at FedEx Forum, it's the Gary Parrish Show, presented by Ortho South, on YouTube at Grind City Media, and the official Grind City Media app. Now, here's your host, Gary Parrish. Hey! I'm here. My name is Gary Parrish. I'm speaking to you from the Built Ford Tough Studio, downtown Memphis, FedEx Forum. CJ Hurt producing the program. Glad he's with me. Glad you're with me. Hope you're getting through the day best you can. And I hope you didn't think the Grizz would shock the world last night and win in Denver as 15 and a half point underdogs because that, that didn't happen. Instead, we got a 25 point loss. It is what it is. We'll talk through it momentarily. First, quickly, let me set today's schedule for you. The next segment, about 20 minutes, Chris Vernon going to join me. I'll talk NBA with him. Grizzlies, the Jonte Porter scandal, possible scandal. Vernon's going to be here in the next segment. I'll chop it up with him around 1020. When I finish talking to Vernon, I'll take a break, come back, do five more things you need to know, at which point we're going to discuss five previously undiscussed stories. Among them, John Calipari. You remember him? He used to coach right in FedEx Forum. He's a Memphis coach. Now he coaches at Kentucky. Had his radio show last night. Sounded like a man who was planning to return for a 16th year with the Wildcats. I'll tell you what he said in about 40 minutes. Caitlin Clark played her final game inside Carver Hawkeye Arena last night as a member of Iowa's women's team at least. Uh, they won. It was an ugly game, but she advances. She's in the Sweet 16. We'll talk women's basketball in just a bit. The much-anticipated third season of Entourage has been put on ice indefinitely. That's disappointing. Also understandable. I'll tell you what's up in the third segment. Shohei Otani read a statement to address his uh, gambling scandal that's overshadowing the start of this 2024 MLB season. I'll tell you what the uh, Dodgers star said a little later on in the show. In tragedy in the middle of the night in Baltimore. Cargo ship. Hits a bridge around 1.30 a.m. Entire bridge collapses. They're still looking for people on the river. That's never a good sign. We'll spend a few minutes on that. During a segment, we call five more things you need to know. Then we'll eventually do GP's carry out and call it a day. So that's the rundown. We got a lot to get to. But I did want to start with the, the Memphis Grizzlies because game 72 of a scheduled 82 was held last night in Denver. It did not, it did not go well for the visitors. It usually doesn't. 
Final score, Nuggets 128, Grizzlies 103. It was a 25-point loss on the road. Nikola Jokic took 18 shots, made 11 of them, finished with 29 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists, 3 steals. Awesome as always. The Grizzlies were down 39-24 after one quarter. They trailed by as many as 31 in the game. Lost by 25. So they're now 24-48 and with just 10 games remaining. It's almost over. It's almost over. They got the seventh worst record in the NBA, which means if the season ended today, and you know what? It'd be fine with me. It, you'd, <laughs> it, it'd be fine with me. If the season ended today, it'd be fine with me. But if the season ended today with the seventh worst record in the NBA, it means that the Grizzlies would have a 7.5% chance to get the number one pick in the draft, a 7.8% chance to get the number two pick in the draft, an 8.1% chance to get the number three pick in the draft, an 8.5% chance to get the number four pick in the draft, so a 31.9% chance to get a top four pick in the 2024 NBA draft, and a better than 50% chance to get a pick that lands in the top seven. So that ultimately is going to be our reward for suffering through this miserable season filled with, you know, suspensions and, and injuries. But for now, we're just we're just suffering through this miserable season filled with suspensions and injuries. CJ, don't lie to me. First, thank you for being here. No, no problem. Always fun to be here. I appreciate you being here. Always fun. Hey, level with me. How long did how long did it take you to clock out last night? How long before you said, all right, I seen that. This is we enough. we haven't talked about my sleep schedule, Gary. Hmm. Uh, I'm a weirdo. I'm up at like 2 30 okay and that's typically when i watch grizzlies games mm-hmm. and so i tuned out about 3 45 4 o'clock when i realized stuff was pop- popping off in baltimore Woo! that's when i tuned out but i got through two and a half quarters mm-hmm. i got through first quarter second quarter and about midway through the third quarter i was like oh stuff is happening in baltimore let me let me tune in so i'm on a plane and the the yeah, boy, if I could ever change one thing about the direct flights from Memphis to LaGuardia and back, I'd put TVs in them. Okay. We don't have TVs in our planes. Wait, what? Hold on. It, it's don't, I don't. I, it, I thought all the planes came with TVs. Man, I, I, I can I can testify that they do not. Wow. The, 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 the planes that they typically use for New York to Memphis, Memphis to LaGuardia, LaGuardia back to Memphis, no planes. I fly it every Monday, every Thursday. Whatever day of the week it is tomorrow, I'll be back on it. There's no planes, so I've been flying, having to fly at night mm-hmm. uh, because we've been having to do a television show in the middle of the day for CBS Sports Network, and then I can fly home at night. So I'm I'm flying during the game, and I don't have a TV, so I can't watch it because the streaming. The also these planes aren't the best with Wi-Fi either. Ah. I, I'm surprised we I'm surprised well, we even make it. Well, if I'm being honest, Boeing is having a shakeup up top. They're, yeah, they're changing some things up at the people who are running it. So maybe they'll hear our pleas. They'll fix the Wi-Fi and they'll put TVs on there as well as keep wheels on the plane. To yeah, get the like, doors yeah, on there. yeah. I mean, my bar's low. As long as we keep all the wheels on, you know, none of the doors fly mm-hmm. off. Yeah, I, you know, that's good enough for me, I guess. <laughs> if my I I know I'm nitpicking. Like no, the door didn't fly off last night, and uh, you know the wheels didn't fall off last night. We landed safely, best I could tell. Uh, but I have no television, and the Wi-Fi is bad, so I'm doing my best to try to keep up. But it ain't easy. Yeah. And then I realized very quickly, like in the first quarter. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna have to keep up with this. At all. <laughs> this ain't something I'm gonna have to keep up with. I can go back to sleep. And it's just one of those seasons. I actually kind of like that I am so bombarded with college basketball now that I'm just like, I I'm, I don't have to live and die with it every minute because it's just, I'm so distracted by other things that like this, this miserable grizzly season, it's just sort of happening and it's happening in right. the background, at least for me. And uh, by the time the college basketball season is over and it's like I look up and it's, okay, I'm back home. My suitcase is up. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. It'll, it'll, it'll basically it'll be, over. be over. And then we can just start looking forward to next year because it, it, I, I guess it, it's, just, it's been a minute since we've been through a season like this where it's late March, early April, and, and the games are, are meaningless games. And, and, and you don't you – know, we're not looking at standings anymore as much as we're looking at – uh, lottery odds, and so this is an unusual place to be. But I've sort of been able to 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 make it easier than it otherwise would be by but just I'm distracted by this other stuff, and these games are happening. But 
by the time the NCAA tournament's over, um, it'd be about another week, and then and then the NBA thing is over as well. I haven't had a whole lot of these post or not post, but like since the core four era right. to to now. There was well, we thought we would have to go through the, a rebuild, have, uh, and then Ja uh, just rebuild. expedited that entire thing. Like what what would normally be say a three year rebuild just became like a one year type of thing yeah. because. Uh, ja just popped the way that he popped. So it's been. A, I hope we don't have to do this again anytime soon. I hope, but I, I have been able to like. All right, this game's happening. I'm on a plane. It's not going so well. I'll check the box score in the morning. Yeah. It's one of those type of deals. So next up for the Grizzlies, uh, game 73 of a scheduled 82. That's going to be tomorrow night here inside FedEx Forum. Lakers are in town. That's always fun, regardless of the circumstances. It's going to be the second night of a back to back. For the Lakers because they're in Milwaukee tonight. They got a TNT game at 6:30, and I guess it's unclear if LeBron J- and that's a big deal. Like whether LeBron's going to play tomorrow night inside FedEx Forum. Like we don't know that right now. He's the all-time leading scorer in NBA history. He is listed as doubtful for tonight's game in Milwaukee um, with an ankle issue that's been bothering him for months. Now he played 30 something minutes on Sunday, but he's listed as doubtful for tonight. So I, I I would imagine this is true. You tell me what you think. If he plays tonight on a not perfect ankle, probably doesn't play tomorrow night on a not perfect ankle. If he doesn't play tonight on a not perfect ankle, then he might try to go tomorrow. In fact, I wonder if the reason he's listed as doubtful after playing 30 plus minutes on Sunday is simply because they know he's not going to play both of these games. And maybe if you're the Lakers, you're being strategic here. Like, with LeBron, are we going to win in Milwaukee? Maybe not, but we can win in Memphis. So maybe we sit him in Milwaukee, take our L, and then go play him in in Memphis and make sure we get that. Makes perfect sense to me. We see NBA teams do this uh, a whole lot where, all right, we got a back-to-back. Which one can we absolutely win if this player is is out there? It's almost like spades and you're counting your books, right? Right. It is, hey, that Milwaukee game is a possible. Right. The Memphis game seems more solid than, right. than that. So we'll we'll rest them on the front end and play them on the back end of the back-to-back. That's what I think I would do. Yeah. That's what I think I would do. So we'll see if he's in the lineup tonight. But as of this moment, listed as doubtful in Milwaukee with a game in Memphis scheduled for tomorrow night, the second of a back-to-back. And I guess the other storyline um, for tomorrow night would be most people seem to think we're going to see the de- season debut of Brandon Clark. He was listed – as doubtful in advance of last night's game, following typical franchise protocol, one more upgrade, and he should be good to go. Do you think he plays tomorrow night? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Like you said, it's that's what the franchise does. They do the doubtful and questionable and the players out there that, that next game. Are you surprised we're going to see him play? No. I If – my thought was, if, if I was in charge, if I was running things, my thought was, hey, if they're playing for something late in the season, which to start the season, my assumption was that they would sure. be playing for something late in the season, don't bring them back. You, you, you're trying to improve seeding, and then you're going into the playoffs, and every game matters. You don't really have the time to let a player work himself back in to basketball shape and into high-level competition that and high-pressure situations, right, that come with playing for things late in the season and playing in the playoffs where every game, every possession matters. But now with the season being what the season is, like, yes, I would absolutely, seeing how the season turned, pit him out there, let him get a taste of NBA action, and then he can go into offseason, do offseason conditioning, and come back with the trust in his body. Because that's that's what it is right now with the Achilles. How much can I trust it? You get him out there the last 10 games of the season, let him see what his body is capable of doing in the actual like NBA game, uh, get those types of reps in, and then you know he should hit the ground running uh, next season. That, that's my thought. Yeah, and I, I think I, I, I gather there's some thought out there that why bring a guy back from major injury with 10 games left in a season going nowhere, just let him continue to rest, not push it, and even if he's 100% now, he'll be even better at the start of next season. You don't You gain very little. I don't want to say nothing, but very little by putting him in these games. And perhaps there's some truth to that. But I always try to remind myself that the people who are actually making these decisions aren't fans. 
there, there are people who have like their careers invested in this stuff. Like Zach has much more at stake with Brandon Clark going forward than I do or you do right. or anybody with a Twitter account does. So I always just try to remind myself, clearly there's an inherent risk in bringing anybody back from injury at any time. And there's an inherent risk in playing people um, in a season that's headed for the lottery because obviously if Jaron or Dez or in this case Brandon were to suffer an injury that would trickle into next season, then the second guessing will start pretty quickly. Why were they even playing um, given the, the context of the season? And I get all that. But as we've talked about before, this isn't really a conversation that we have in most other sports. You know, baseball players play even when it's clear they're not going to the the postseason. Football players play even when it's clear they're not going to the postseason. Only in basketball do we have these um, these conversations about should you shut people down for weeks at a time or months at a time. So if we've reached the point where we most of us agreed, yeah, we're not going to shut down Jaron Jackson. We're not going to shut down Desmond Bain. Then as long as Brandon Clark is healthy and the doctors have signed off on it and he feels the way he needs to feel and everybody says this is where he needs to be, if they're if the front office is comfortable with it, I'd, I'd feel a little silly screaming that I'm not, given that they have much more at stake than I do. And that's sort of where I'm at on it. Mm-hmm. Now, if something bad happens, it won't stop people from being critical and second-guessing, but I guess that's the nature of all this stuff. But I, I try not to ever second-guess unless I – at least hold it up as a possibility um, in advance of it. So am I aware that something bad could happen bringing Brandon Clark back with 10 games left in the season? Yes, I'm aware of it. I'm sure they are too. But something bad could happen with Jaron or Dez or anybody you're going to see on the court tomorrow night. I mean, hell, something bad can happen with Brandon Clark doing offseason. The the, off season, right? Playing, right. practicing, running right. pickup. We've seen that before. We saw Chet Holmgren go That's through right. something his – First year, not his rookie year because he didn't play his first year right. in the league where playing in one of these pro rounds ended up messing up his leg, leg and then having to sit out a season. Paul George has had stuff happening, practicing for Team USA. Things happen sometimes. That's right. It won't. This That shouldn't stop you from playing him if he's ready to go. That's right. And I, I, I do. I understand the counter argument. I understand it. I just think that when you weigh all the pros and cons, it, it, it the pros outweigh the cons. If he's healthy like quite literally 100% recovered and ready to go, then then you're not bringing him back a week early because you're in a playoff push. Mm-hmm. It's like this is when like the, this is when everybody says it's time for him to to take the next step and the next step is to play in an actual game. And if all the people who have much more experience and knowledge about these things have reached the conclusion, they're the ones that have millions of dollars invested in him. Yeah. Not me. If Brandon Clark goes down, nobody is going to question Gary Parish, right? <laughs> if Brandon Clark goes down, nobody is going to blame me. Right. They have much more invested in this than than you and I do or anybody else. And if they're comfortable with it, I'd feel a little silly being uncomfortable with it. Just out of curiosity, I'm, I'm wondering what the thought process is. Why bring him? Not saying it's wrong, right? I, I'm I'm pro play him if he's ready to go why not start him off in the the hustle is the hustle season still going yeah it's like just, start him off there yeah it's one of those deals where i mean i don't want to speak for them yeah but it's just not the way we do it in the nba okay and it's interesting because in in major league baseball you like could i sing is the mets ace and he's got a, you know, a, 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 you know, just like everybody else, he's battling injuries. Right. And there's some thought that he'll be able to throw in a few weeks, but but then it's like a ramp up session, and mm-hmm. then he's going to have to do three triple A start. He'll go down to Florida and pitch in a rookie ball, and then he'll do a, a start at triple A and a start. There's a process to everything, and in the NBA, it's almost like you do all your work, um, you know, behind the scenes in the dark, and then when you're ready to go, it's like all right. We're going to put you in an NBA game. Uh, there are there is a such thing as rehab assignments in the G League. Like that does happen. Clay Thompson did that. Yeah, I think. Couple, but handful. it's not normal in yeah. in in the NBA. They just sort of like you know you are, are you ready to play basketball? Okay, well then we're going to put you in this NBA game. There's not usually a build up or a ramp up in the G League. I've wondered. I've actually had the conversation with somebody about this as recently as the past couple of weeks. Like I wonder if if the NBA will ever start doing it more the way Major League Baseball does it, or vice versa. Like, it's a little frustrating sometimes as a baseball fan. You've got a, you know, like let's say your number three hitter 
has uh, went on a, a you know suffered an injury, was out for six weeks, and then they're ready to come back, but they spend a week at AAA. It's like, yo, he's hitting a triple. Like, bring him up and put him back. <laughs> like, why do I need to watch him hit in AAA for a week? The and, ball ain't changed. The field dimensions ain't changed. Yeah, man. like let's well, he hit here. Yeah, like let's just how about let's just put him back in the middle of the lineup in the series against the Braves and let's see what's <laughs> happened. Why has he got to spend a week at AAA? I'm sure they know what they're doing, but it is interesting to me that. Basketball franchises and baseball franchises handle that type of thing in, in in completely different ways. Some of that might be minor league baseball is ingrained in major league baseball, yeah. whereas the G League, everybody just got their own G League affiliate. Well, that, so that might be, be well, some I, of it. I do think some of it is maybe ego-ish, okay. ego in the sense that um, it's just sort of understood whether you're Ronald Acuna or, a, you know, a, 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 a utility infielder. If you are injured and you're out of the big leagues for a while, you will play minor league baseball before you return to the big leagues. Like you, like Ronald Acuna or whoever will be like all stars will be like uh, Yadier Molina was playing at AutoZone Park, right? Yeah. Because it's just it's just sort of understood this. If you're coming off an injury, you you your baseball restarts in the minors. And then you progress to the majors. So nobody's offended by it because it's just always been the way it's been done. Whereas you're, to your point in basketball, there's this is all new. And it was like, I'm not going to go play in the G League to rehab. Just put me – I'll, I'll play in San Antonio, but I'm not going to go play in South Haven. Right. There's just sort of – there's. I think there's a stigma attached to it too that maybe is an issue. I have I – have, I have found it interesting though that the approach is very it's, different. It's, it's not just with injuries. Now we're now you've got me thinking about it. It's like draft picks also, where if you're drafted highly in baseball, you're going to start off in the minors for a period of time. If you're drafted anywhere in baseball. If you're drafted anywhere, like you're going to start off in minors and then work your way yeah. up with the understanding being, yeah, one day we'll bring well, you. Well, imagine up where, imagine if Paulo Bancaro was right. the number one pick in a draft, but you were not gonna see him play for the Magic for at least two years. That's what baseball is. Yeah. You don't see these guys like uh, Livy Dunn's boyfriend, Paul Skeens at LSU. Like he's, he's, you know, number one pick in the draft, and uh, he's by all accounts like you will not you you will probably not even see him pitch in the major leagues this year. Yeah, there's a process to all of it. So these different sports handle things different ways. Um, you know, we'll, we'll it, 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 perhaps it'll be different one day. But for now, if you're a basketball player, once you're ready to go, they usually just drop you right back in an NBA mm -hmm. game and. To circle this back around, we'll probably see that with Brandon Clark tomorrow night. I'll ask Vernon what he thinks. He'll be in studio next. Justin Timberlake. I'm sexy back. The Forget Tomorrow World Tour. Live in Memphis. Justin Timberlake. FedEx Forum, Saturday, November 23rd. Get tickets this Thursday at 10 a.m. at LiveNation.com. The brand new single Selfish is available to stream and download now. Oh, if I get jealous, I can't help it. For more, hit up JustinTimberlake.com. He's looking for the hot hand. Jaren got the step, Woo! got the flush. There's no layups on that one. Electric, rowdy. Intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. The minute you get into a brand new relationship, like magic. You know who really notices just how happy you are, guys? Other women, not your woman. Look how happy he is. Oh, I bet I can change that. Friday, May 10th, FedEx Forum. Get your tickets now at fluffyguy.com. Don't miss a Memphis. Don't worry, be fluffy world tour. You saw with four seconds for the win. Yes! Marcus. One of the more competitive people you'll meet. Yeah, you lose. Their willingness to go out and try to compete every day, not just wait for a game, not wait for a regular season game, not wait for a playoff game, but every day is what made Mark special. He was a big part of that identity, right? And a big part of that's why the, the team was so successful because he had that anchor in him. The Grizzlies, to this day, wouldn't be the Grizzlies without the contribution of Marcus All. Real country music. With Cody Johnson, live 
Saturday, April 13th at FedEx Forum. Country's best. The Leather Tour with Cody Johnson. With special guest Justin Moore. Also featuring Drake Milligan. VIP and reserve seats on sale at Ticketmaster.com in the FedEx Forum box office. Cody Johnson. Welcome back, Gary Parrish Show, presented by Ortho South. We're in the Built Four Tough Studio, and on Tuesdays in the second segment, I'm joined by the host of the Chris Vernon Show, yeah. weekdays noon, Grind City yep. Media. It's Chris Vernon yep. in his King Griffey Jr. shirt. Yeah, hey, right. I thought I was going to put my kids through college with that baseball card one day. Now I don't even know where it's at. If you find it, let me know. Oh, yeah. How much How much one of those <laughs> go for these days? I mean, if it grades out of like a 10... I mean, you ain't going to college on it, especially the colleges you try to send your kids to. Well, never again. <laughs> <laughs> All my kids are going to Southern Miss from now on. <laughs> I, rest of my kids are going to Hattiesburg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, well, Dad, Dad, expensive, brother. Dad, you think I could uh, go to an Ivy League school? Buddy, you are going to Itawamba Community College. <laughs> 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 we're going to do two years at Itawamba. And then if you're lucky, we go if you're lucky, we go into Delta State. I mean, look, our kids are young enough. Hopefully college won't be a thing. <laughs> right? Everybody's just doing it online. I hope so. I, I promise. I promise. I feel like mine would be absolutely fine with that. Oh, I hope so. He doesn't want to go to a school now. Oh, no. Bro, no. You should have seen when I told him I was taking him to the tournament on Friday. Oh. There was – um, it's one of the, the bazillionaires, Bezos or Elon or somebody like that. They had a pro. Maybe it was Mark Cuban, but it was. They had a program a few years ago. Do you ever hear about this? Where they found like bright, creative young people, and and paid them not to go to college. Said we we just want you to be a creative, and so rather than go to college, like w just get in here, work with us. Here's two hundred thousand dollars. That's your annual salary. Just come sit with us and let's think and let's and you come help us come up with ideas, and then we have the we can execute them. And they were just. You don't, the whole point was you don't need college. And I don't know if that's an accurate message for young people, but it is. I do think the way we've been doing things for so long is going to be turned upside down at some point very quickly. There's no question. It's, I mean, let's just look at our two jobs and both of us, I think, regularly get young people asking us about our jobs mm -hmm. and about any advice that we would have and how did you get into it, whatever. And like. There's so few things that are applicable for what I did versus what the path I would go now, right? If I were what I was 21 trying to get a job in sports radio, it would be much, much different. That is not the path I would take as now that I'm now that I'm older. I mean, it, and again, we're getting old. So, I mean, it's 20 something years ago. Of course, yeah. things have changed dramatically. But there are some things that are still applicable, but there's a lot that's not. I can't tell somebody to do the same thing I did. And in order, it, it's not the route I would take to have the job that I have. Now, whereas for years and years and years, you would take virtually the same route to get the jobs that people end up having. I get asked to speak to students all you the time. You for sure wouldn't. I, uh, there is nothing. Is there I, even still a school newspaper? Yes. Yeah, there yes. Is. Yeah. There but, is. But like, I, I, this, I don't think of myself as old, although I know I am. But like, I can remember being in college and somebody would take a picture of Marcus Moody at a basketball game and they would have to bring that back into the dark room and float it in some water. Yeah. Like, that's where we were. Oh, yeah. And then. And then, like, glue it on a piece of paper. And then somebody with a truck would come pick it up and take it somewhere and print it and then bring it back to us. Right. Like, that's where we were. But to your point about, like, the path, I always tell students, they, they say, can you tell your story? Like, how did, you, what, how did you become who you are? So I tell my story, and then I immediately say, that is not your story. It will not be your story because that's like, that's like, it's like telling you how to make a black and white movie now. That's right. It, it, I didn't take a single radio class or a single television class when I was in college. And now all I do is talk 
right. what, it, what amounts to radio and television because they made you pick. When I was in college, they said, do you want to be a writer or do you want to be on radio or do you want to be on TV? That, that it was different types of journalism. Right. And because nobody did all these things. Well, now what I tell I, – I talked to Indiana students just last week in, in New York. They were there on some school trip and they came by the broadcast center. And I said, now – I said, I don't know what any of you want to be. But if you want to be in a writer or in television or, or in radio, podcasting, whatever, learn to do all of it. Because if you're good at one of them, you'll be asked to do all of them. What would you tell a kid that says, I love writing. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm good at. And maybe they're ugly. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're, you know, fat. Or maybe they're, you know what I mean? Feel like, like you feel like you're talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you can hey, hey, tell hey. them, yeah, okay. hey, so, I, hey, I know, what, I know what you're going anything through. Hey, possible. look at me. Anything's possible. <laughs> no, 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 no. But that, maybe that's just what they like. Yeah. They don't like the sound of their voice. Right. Understand. They don't like the way they look on camera. They're right. not comfortable behind a microphone. They're not comfortable in front of a camera. Right. I want to be a writer. I say, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> really? Because that's, Seriously. I would I, I do wonder. I, is there going to be writers who are not multifaceted? Yes, but not many. I mean, I think about everybody. You know, obviously, I've got that gig at The Ringer. I think everybody does a podcast. Right. Or is at least a part of one. Right. In some ways. Right. I think there might be a few. You know, there's very few that are not. Like, even, you know, you know our mutual friend who I believe to be the best sports writer in the world, is Wright Thompson. Mm -hmm. Wright's got a freaking television food show, show yes. on SEC Network now. I mean, like, I, I wonder if anybody can just write for a living. I mean, not, he, it's not books. Even even beat writers in, yeah. in the city, they all have yeah. podcasts, right? Like yeah, they have the, an DeMichael, extra. DeMichael's doing a podcast. Yeah, and, my, advi my advice would be, like, if that's what your passion is, that's what you should do. Uh, you know, I, I – my – no, can you make a living? I think you can make. Well, like, what kind of living you want to make? I, I, I would, I would tell this. I would, I would ask somebody how much, how much is money important to you? Because you ain't gonna be, you're probably not gonna get rich just trying to be a writer. You know, you, you. Because like, who are the big? Like, you said probably like right now, probably the most famous outside of like a J.K. Rowling or something. Yeah. But like Malcolm Gladwell, right? Yeah. He's mega famous. But I mean, Malcolm's got he's got the a big podcast. I only know Malcolm Gladwell through the podcast. Right. Michael Michael Lewis does a bunch of podcasts too. Right. Yeah. Like, and it's like yeah. Michael Lewis wrote friggin' Moneyball and the Big Short and whatever, and he's still doing that kind of crap. Like if you just want to be a writer, you can make a living doing that, but you will not. You you won't. You won't. You don't think writer is a career? It is not the career I would pursue, and it's not the career I would advise my children to pursue. How much money do you need to be happy? And then yeah. how much money well, can you make right? What do you think the high end of like a col columnist was what you looked to, right? Mm -hmm. Like for me, it was either be a national sports talk host or be a, you know, one of those guys in a huge market, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but that's changed dramatically. You wouldn't right. want to be that anymore. Mm -mm. You wouldn't. You wouldn't want to be that anymore. I mean, Mike Francesca doesn't even exist on radio anymore. Tony Kornheiser was as big as there was in D.C. He doesn't exist. I mean, yeah. all that's changed. We've all dramatically. We've, we've turned down all that stuff. Yeah, and, and, but it's all changed yeah. dramatically, right, to where that's not what you want. That's not what you wanted to do. For you, it would have been be a columnist, right? Yeah, all I like ever, a Mike Lupica, I guess with Bob Ryan. If I, if I, those guys that were on the when, sports when, report. When I graduated college, I would have loved to have been uh, the columnist at the Commercial Appeal someday. I would have been very happy with that. But it is kind of crazy to even think about. Even as a child, the biggest columnist in the country were on with Dick Shep and the Sports Reporter. That's right, right. <laughs> like, so they, but that, but like it, that was like the genesis of it, it kind of. Yes, but that was like three of them, four of them, five right. of them. It almost seemed impossible. So much so that when I was in college in the late '90s, it it was not even. If I would have said, but I kind of think I want to be a writer, but also on TV, they'd have been like, eh, that's not really a thing. You know, that's not really the way it works. But over time, you know where it really started. But I do wonder if there's something, if there's a benefit to doing that first anyway. Because Stephen A. Smith was a writer. Skip Bayless was well, a writer. I think, I think what Jason Whitlock was a writer. I mean, you know, all well, these guys. Well, Bill Simmons, for that matter, well, I was think, a writer. I think what happens is the being a writer, 
like first as a Memphis beat writer and then as a columnist for CBS Sports. It 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 gives you a surface level of credibility for sure. And then so then people they. It, it, it suggests to people you should care what this person says because they You've do. You've done the work. Right. That's right. And then you you look up 15, 20 years later and you're just the talker now. That's right. But it all is, it's rooted in I entered this space with a certain level of credibility. Like I get emails from people, I'm sure you do too, every once in a while and they just want to you know break into the industry. They just want to start talking. Mm -hmm. They just want to be the talker to begin with. And that's a much more difficult because I always tell people, like, I, why, why should I listen to you? They, I, I say it all the time. I see young people. I say, so what do you? Those, they're start. I'm gonna start a podcast. Okay, on what? On the NBA. Okay, cool. Why should I listen to you? Mm -hmm. Like Zach Lowe's got a podcast. There's only so many hours in the day. Why? Why would I listen to you? And they never have a great answer for that. And that's sure. the thing. Like, you need to be an expert on something, or 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 do something where there's um there's a need for it. But I don't need a, a 21 year old I've never heard of talking about the NBA. You might be great. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just saying, why would I ever come to you to begin with? Right. So that makes sense. Yeah. But like it, it's. Um, and so I think I actually do think that would work still. I wrote for so and so, and that's why like the, for the credibility part of it. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Well, just say yeah. It, for it, sure. Like it, look, if if you or I, let's just say I was with. Uh, uh, Drew Hill uh -huh. this past weekend at the NCAA tournament. You bring Drew in here, people are going to listen to what Drew has to say because he's around the Grizzlies That's all right. the time. Well, how about this? DeMichael, same way. He's Why, around the team. When you're hosting a – at first it was like a Friday night show at Sports 56, but then it was like the – what, and I'd come in for Gary Parish Wednesdays right. or whatever that was. You didn't initially have me on your show because we laughed at the same stuff. It was like you, you cover the Tiger basketball team every day. You travel with them. Yep. And then we – so it was like I want to talk to you. Yep. And then we realized, oh, we laugh at the same stuff. We think right. – you know, we, we find the same things funny. We have chemistry. Now we can talk about anything. And then next thing – then here we are. Right. But it started with – like the, You were the beat writer. Yeah, and the same I thing. I wanted to hear about the Tigers. In my television career, it's the same thing. Right. I, I wasn't hired by CBS Sports to be on TV. Right. I was hired to be a, a writer because I had been a writer. But then um, because you're a successful writer, people say, well, I want him on radio. And then people hear you on radio. They go, oh, wow, he can talk. Mm -hmm. And then somebody somewhere decided, well, this guy works for us. Why don't we bring him and put him in studio? Right. He can talk. He knows what he's talking about, and he can talk. And next thing you know, you're going to New York every week to talk on TV. But it all starts with I entered the space with credibility. Yeah. And I think too often these days, then this is where you start to sound like the old guy, but people just want to enter the space. Like, hey, I, I watch sports a lot. That's right. I know a lot about sports. Let me talk on your show. Well, right. why why would anybody care what you say? Right. You know, so. And it's easier to enter the space now, right? There were there were so many Well, there's more rails. space. Yeah, it's so it's infinite amount of space now with the way that social well, there, media a, is, podcasts, it, it, well, all there, of that. There, now everybody's it can be one. hard to get people to listen to your podcast, yeah. but it ain't hard to start one. Nope. Anybody can have a podcast. Well, and I, uh, I actually just had this discussion. I went on a. Uh, uh, Ethan Strauss's podcast last week, and, and one of the things I told him, I told him about, you know, George Lapidus once upon a time, and he had taken a liking to me when I was young, and he put me in a room, and I, I've told this story many times, and he said, I'm going to give you the same advice that my first editor gave me, which is the best advice I got. He said, be there. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what he was talking about, but there was the idea that you need to be omnipresent, right? You are young, you are in your 20s, you are single, you know, you need to be at every event because that is what is going to set you apart. Mm -hmm. The fact that you were there, you then become the eyes and ears for fans that were not there. People want to know what it was like to be in that arena, That's what right. it was like to be in that press conference, what it was like to be in that locker room. And so I took that really to heart. And I was at every John Calipari practice I could be at. I was at every press conference. I was at every before and after uh, press conference that the Grizzlies coach did at the time. So Sidney Lowe, Hubie Brown, Mike Fratello, on and on. And then every game that I could possibly go to. And every event. And then practices when I couldn't. And it was like, that's how very young I was like, why are people going to care what I have to okay. say about this? And the answer was that advice that I had gotten, which was I was there. Right. I was there. And then 
I became a personality to the people involved. That's right. Right. So John Calperi knows who you are. Right. And uh, Sidney Lowe knows who you are. And Tommy West knows who you are. And Steve Earhart at the Liberty Bowl. Sure. And R.C. Johnson. And everybody knows who you are. Now you're a per Now you're somebody. Right. Right. Because all of the people that are involved in all of this know you. And then the players start to know you. And it's like, that's that's the trick. That's the difference is that. I became somebody to not only, you know, the, the, the people that were involved in whatever I was covering, but also I could go back on the air the next day and say, I went out to Tiger practice yesterday That's right. and right. so-and-so looks good, so-and-so looks terrible, so-and-so looks hurt, so-and-so looks... Well, if you see on TV all the time, the, the insiders, whether it's Schefter or uh, the Rothstein, I don't consider myself that much anymore, but like even... You know, you're constantly wanting – if you can honestly say things like – so I was talking to Shaka Smart two days ago. That's right. You know, um, so I was uh, so I was on the phone with a Kentucky assistant last night. They, it, it, it lends like, oh, wow, this guy's actually talking to people that we don't have access to. Right. I wonder, let, let's hear what he has to say. That's right. it, it, it's helpful. Um, so I, it's – it's confu It's a confusing time for young people trying to break into the industry because there's so much uncertainty. You don't know where – like you couldn't have imagined 25 years ago that we'd be doing all the things we're doing now. No. Um, even 15 years ago, we'd be doing all this. So um, I, I, I think the one constant, and this is what I try to tell young people, is that put yourself in the room, like whatever room you want to get to, like get in that room. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it, certainly at 92.9, that, that, that was always a, 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 a good advice to give somebody, just get in the building. And next thing you know, you'll be producing a show because yeah. somebody's sick or somebody's on vacation. And you might not get the job you want initially, but if you get in the room, you'll be closer to it than you ever were before. Right. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a weird space to be trying to enter. But I guess it's it, talent and hard work. If you got those two qualities – You'll figure it out. Yeah. You usually get people who are talented and work hard usually get where they're supposed to get to. I think that's true probably right. in any industry. In, in most industries. Like you gotta have both. That's right. One without the other won't get you probably too too far. Well, it's like I texted you yesterday about our girl Rachel Heck. She'll right. be successful in no whatever she does. What she does. That's right. Maybe she's not gonna be in the Professional Golf Hall of Fame. Right. But I promise you this. She'll be a millionaire somehow. You know her better than I. You spent more time with her. I've been around her a little. I will say that when I saw that yesterday, her announcement that she's not going to pursue a professional career. Right. Keep in mind, it was just a few years ago where she looked like she would be the, the, the number one ranked women's player in the world someday. For sure. I mean, she set all the freshman records in the history of women's golf at she Stanford. She left Memphis, yeah. went to Stanford, right. and as a freshman, amongst every great amateur golfer that is playing college right she's better than all of them that's right immediately right so i i guess when i read that yesterday it didn't shock me just me either. just in the in the very brief interactions i've had with her i she always struck me as man she seemed to be interested in a lot of stuff outside of golf this is why i think it shouldn't shock anybody is well i don't want to say that look anybody that could be possibly one of the greatest ever right. and was, you know, on track to become like female Tiger Woods. Yeah. Like just point. so people, right. just so but people understand this, no, it, really would, it would be like if Reed Shepard announced tomorrow, he's just not going to pursue a professional basketball career. Dude, N Nike or, had one NIL deal. Yeah. It was Rachel. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, so she, if, you know, these people are paid millions of dollars to project right. who is going to become the next big thing in American sports. And she was certainly on track to do that. And I think, you know, when we had when we had filmed the thing with her, obviously I've spent a lot of time with her. And um, I always got the sense that, you know, Tiger went to Stanford and was the best of the best. And then he turned pro. And even her buddy, Rose Zhang. Went to Stanford and won two national titles. And then she turned pro. And everybody after her freshman year, it's like, okay, done this, done that. You know what I mean? Like, I've accomplished. What else am I going to do? Win a bunch of national titles? And it was like everybody kind of expected, hey, she's going to go become a professional. Like, that's what you're doing. Like, I am a golfer, and so I'm going to go to college. But now I'm playing golf in college. Well, okay, check that one off. I'm the best there. Now it's time to go to pros because I'm obviously one of the best in the world. And... From that moment, even after her freshman year and all that success, 
She's like, I'm going to college. I remember She's what she like, told professional me. Professional golf will always be there if I want it to be there. This is this is the first time where I was like, huh, like this. I, not judging, yeah, uh, but just like interesting. She, because I, I was like, so what are you going to do now? It was after she won all this stuff her freshman year. We were out at Southwind, and I was like, so what? What are you going to do? And she's like, I'm staying. She's like, I would stay. This this was the quote. I would stay at Stanford forever if they would let me. Yeah. And I was like, that's a different approach. Well, and the other that's thing, that's a different mindset. The other thing is. When I had discussed it with her, I, I think uh, I think it's a lot different than the men's game. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I don't think being on the LPGA Tour is a fancy lifestyle. Right. They ain't staying in houses that they rent and these amazing hotels in these, you know, like you, you think about it and you're like, oh, and then I get to go play Bay Hill, and then I get to go play Las Colinas, and then I get to go play East Lake, and I get to, you know, and you kind of got that, or Southwind for that matter, right? And these guys are renting houses, or they're staying at some kind of fancy hotel or whatever else. Like, the money ain't the same, The li and it's like, I don't think that that lifestyle, I think you've got to, like, want to be the best golfer in the world, That's right. or else that lifestyle is not something that you want. It's not some kind of, I mean, think about it. How many... Female golfers, can you? I mean, like, like no, Nelly. <laughs> can the average American zero. I mean, zero. Maybe. Name name one female golfer. One Wong one. <laughs> like wait, well, I'm 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 blanking because she tried to play with the women with the men, right? Who who was that one? <laughs> oh well, then I'm out. No, I think I think no. And Lexi that's Thompson not... just did the thing. Yeah, with Matt right. Tolman, Nelly Corda. Uh, Nelly Corda. Rose Zang. Rose Zang. Like the, but the, how many women's golfers can the average American name? Zero. Right. Yeah. It's zero. Yeah. And it's not like she's picking between being a professional golfer and, uh, you know, she's a Stanford grad. That's right. She, her options are great. Her father's a surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> right. She, she can do whatever she wants to do. <laughs> She'll be fine. She says she's got an internship with a, what is it? Private equity. Right. She's going to be fine. Getting, the, getting the Asians mixed up. We. <laughs> Well, I said Wong. Well, That's not a good look for your boy. But, but hey, it was in, a W. Hey, in, in, in fairness, in fairness, <laughs> Google. I bet we could find. I bet there's. There's a. She's in. There is there she, one. She's in. I, I, I think she's going to be in the uh, Mark Gasol documentary too. Andrea Wong. You know that? There we go. That's the Wong I was hey, talking that, about. That's the Wong that's you were thinking Wong. of. There we go. You were probably thinking of Andrea Wong. Of I was. Course, absolutely. Of course, great golfer. Course. Love her. Yes, I think Michelle, Michelle Lee's going to be in that Mark documentary oh, yeah? coming out next week. I think so. Because, you know, she's married to Johnny West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry's kid. That's right. And they were Los Angeles. I Ant forgot teammates. they were married. Yeah, there's like a clip I saw of it, and like Johnny's doing the thing, and like all her friggin' trophies were behind him. Do you know this like was. Michelle West has got like. <laughs> This is what I was told. This was Jerry West's office. No. Really? My studio was. They told me this was. Well, that, that's because they wanted you to come here. <laughs> <laughs> they lied to me. Hey, this, this, <laughs> this, this was like Gary Colson's office. <laughs> <I know. laughs> he right in, man. Uh, yeah. Nobody ever knew what he did. <laughs> well, man. Yeah. I've been imagining. Jerry's was. You think Jerry West is going to have that view? Come on, bro. You're Everybody right. Everybody trying to look at the Gibson Guitar Lounge? <laughs> uh, you're right. You're right. What is that now? Is that FedEx? FedEx. It's FedEx. FedEx, I think. We used to yeah. go to that Gibson Guitar Lounge. Remember oh, back yeah. in the day? Kelly was a hostess there when it opened. Is that true? The I remember we went and saw Edwin McCain. Yeah. No, when it ho when it opened. Oh, buddy, that Edwin McCain weekend. Buddy. That Edwin <laughs> McCain weekend. Brother. Woo. I don't know how I survived Brother. that one. I don't know how Edwin McCain survived <laughs> 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 That was a rough one. Did you see that clip going around of that dude from Barstool telling the Jake Gyllenhaal story? Uh -huh. Oh, my God. What? I mean, I can tell it because it's, yeah, it's yeah. literally viral all over yeah, the internet. Yeah. The guy's like, Jake Gyllenhaal, he's like, I was in a bathroom. Because I guess Roadhouse coming out, right? Yeah. He's like, he, the guy tells the story. Roan, the guy that does the pod with, uh, with uh, Pat Bev. And Roan's telling the story. And he's like, I was in this bathroom. And he's like, and there it is, Jake Gyllenhaal. And he's like, and he's walking up to the bathroom stall behind me. He opens up this, like, uh, like, what, like an address book. He said he doesn't even line it up. Just <laughs> <laughs> let right. go. Hey, and he's like, he's like, he's like, oh my god, right? He's like, but he doesn't see I'm in there. He's like, and I'm in the bathroom here. He's like, I'm washing my hands, whatever. And he said he turns around, he comes up, and he's like looking at him. He says, you know, you can see him like in the mirror, whatever. And he's like. 
Go ahead. Tell everyone. No one will believe you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is interesting. Because in the, in, in the all-too-well 10-minute version, she says something about a party bathroom. Really? Oh. Because that song's about him, allegedly. Oh, wow. And she's like so, talking to some actress in a party bathroom. <laughs> oh. Dude. Okay. Okay, Taylor. <laughs> He's out of control. Okay, Taylor. He's out of control. Between that, Jake Gillen, I love Jill and that, That's an amazing story for a dude to say. <laughs> Go ahead, no. tell everyone. No one will believe you. Diddy said the same thing. Oh my God, Diddy's Yo, in trouble. That's a real raid. Oh, dude. They were kicking down <laughs> gates. And stuff. They had his son in handcuffs. You don't go anywhere. We need these phones and these computers because we know there's video in Man, there. Man, Diddy's in trouble. Big. He shouldn't have done all that stuff. No. He should have been a little big. Trouble. Have we have we officially canceled him yet? I'm still making my uh, way we're through on the catalog. We're on our way. Okay, I got. Time. I feel like we're on our way. There's gonna be a surviving Diddy on Netflix. <laughs> oh yeah, that's like, coming. Oh. Survi surviving Diddy. Yeah, and it's just gonna be all these people lined up saying this guy is he did some wild grade stuff. A creepo. Yeah. yeah. Not Sounds like it, it can't be surviving Diddy. That's R. Kelly's thing. I know. It'll it'll be, no, it's going to be, be the new one. <laughs> but, uh, the, good the, part two. So it's going to be a whole series. The, the, so surviving Diddy. Colon the Diddler. Oh no! I seen some wild stuff on X. There were some wild allegations on X. I'm not even comfortable repeating them, but there's some wild allegations out there. Oh, if everybody's saying it, it's not an allegation. We we reach a certain threshold where everybody is saying this. Yeah. Like I'm, I heard stories about Diddy in Nashville, Clarksville, Tennessee, in the mid 2000s. Like, oh yo, what? this man is wild. He's a wild fella. Like the the the. Hate Me Now video, right? The Nas is in it. Diddy's in it. Nas is carrying a cross. Okay. Depicted like he's Jesus finna yeah, be crucified. Yeah, yeah. Diddy is in it also. They ended up taking Diddy out. They took Diddy out. One, because he asked them nicely to. Two, after they didn't take him out, Diddy rolled up on that executive, beat the hell out of him, and dangled him outside of a window. He blew up Kid Cudi's car. Blew up Kid Cudi's That's car. Shot up the the reason he and J-Lo, reckless speculate, the reason he and J-Lo broke up. The, the shooting pops off. Diddy did the shooting. Diddy needs somebody to take the fall. Diddy doesn't want Sean to take the fall because Sean is on bad boy. Sean is, is hot right now. Sean also has a record. J-Lo, you don't have a record. You take it. You eat the gun charge. J-Lo was like, no, I'm not doing that. Relationship ends. Danity Kane's whole existence is predicated on, allegedly, being reported by a lot of different people. People who are around Diddy. Allegedly, reportedly. Don't come get me, Diddy. Um, Danity Kane. He wanted Danity Kane to exist so we could pimp them out to his friends. So he was going to lure them in with contracts, which he did, and then send them across the country for for various services to his, his buddies in the industry. Stories about Diddy partying, right? We get different champagne bottles than the women. The women bottles, and they tell you, don't drink these bottles. You guys drink from these bottles over here because they had drugged the bottles. Yeah, that sounds. And everybody in the industry knew, like, hey, don't go party with Diddy unless you into some freaky stuff. And that's just the stuff like, that I know about sitting here in Memphis, Tennessee. Nowhere near Diddy. Nowhere near New York. No clue what's going on. But I know these stories. I We've known for it. a while. I hate to well, hear Well, that's it. disappointing to hear. That's disappointing to hear. Take that, take that, take that. Then, well, why do you why do you think he's saying take that take that? Oh come on! <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know, know you hate hey, you hey. reap you reap what you sow. I mean, that and that I think that's in the New Testament, isn't two it? Houses, you reap what you two sow. Houses, just, and they're not done. They're coming for the rest of the houses. Oh, yeah. First of all, I didn't know Diddy had so many houses. Why do you need so many different ones? I guess just in case one of them gets raided, you have another one. Well, that's you a know? good point. Always have a backup home. That's a good point. That's tough. That's a tough situation he finds himself in. But you reap what you sow. That was crazy. I mean, like, in the last 24 hours, we have really had two things that, like, look like movies. That thing. And the boat. And the boat. Mm. Dude, I was up last night. We're like, talk two about, different about. things where it's like, you're. I, I've clicked the videos, and I'm like, is this real life? There was, like, helicopters going around. It looked like a SWAT team, yeah. like, flying in on Diddy's house. And I'm like, Cause it was. It looked like it because it was. Oh, and then I saw another one on Instagram where a friggin' worker at the zoo got... Caught in the cage with a silverback gorilla. Oh, that's not how it is. I was that's like, terrible. oh, my. and then she takes off running after she drops the bucket. I'm like, yo, 
Man. Wait, is this a different silverback? Huh? Enclosure, because there was one a couple weeks ago where somebody got in I a gorilla. Know, yeah, yeah, no. I hate this effing algorithm. I can't tell you how many times now I send videos to people and they're like, bro, they came out. Like, look, check the data on that. Yeah. Why are you showing me videos that came out February 8th on my Instagram? No, after? yeah, no, I'll see one and I'll think it's the funniest thing in the world and, and I send it and it's late? like, we saw this 10 days ago. <laughs> You're late, bro. I know, it's hard. What if that's, but what if that was Harambe I saw? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You're just like, this is crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy what they did in Cincinnati. No, there was a, there was a lady that got caught in a cage. Now I saw, yeah, she, she yeah, she just went out there all, all, all willy nilly. Like she, and she didn't know that they had the, the, the apes out. And them apes was like, all right, all right. Let's. <laughs> oh, he's like, he's doing his own Yeah, he's ready to go. I'm like, oh, shit. And the girl is like, She's like, the lady video is like, please, God, please have mercy on her. Please save and her. And God came please through. Save. Yeah, came through. I, but she was really did. talking to God. Did, I never heard somebody talk to God yeah, that, she, she that did intensely. It, she was like, she, she was like, God, it. be here. God. Because that silverback gorilla had plans. Uh-uh. Woo. Well, he'll rip your head off now. Yeah. They you don't gotta watch out for them. It's tough out there. It's they, look just... like, they look like you could be, you know what I mean? You see those movies. You oh, think yeah. you can like, you know, you got that, what is that, Jane, whatever her name is. She's friends with all the animals or chimps. whatever. Friends with chimps. No, but she was like. Yeah. They're like the meanest. Yeah, yeah chimps are. Chimpanzees, chimpanzees are. Like, yeah, are they like pull your eyeballs mean, out and yeah. stuff. I don't want that to that. happen. I but don't I'm need saying to like that silverback gorilla, but you ain't trying to be in there with that. No, no, no it's tough, man. <laughs> it's, it's a wild world out there. I'm saying it. Like, this three times in the last 24 hours, I've seen a lady run away from a silverback gorilla. <laughs> yeah. I've seen a whole SWAT team invade like kicking down doors of a damn mansion <laughs> and then i seen a whole bridge collapse some of this is we is just the apocalypse no i think some of this i mean yes it is okay. but some of this is also we just see too i think we see too much i think so too we shouldn't see all this shit that's right we see but in fairness at least it's distracting us. i shouldn't you be sitting I mean? at my like desk in the 50s like you know everybody was like domestic abuser <laughs> yeah wow <laughs> Wow. I'm too busy to be mad. <laughs> I'm too busy to be well, mad at anybody. Me alone. Yeah. I'm trying to watch this lady roll yeah. over with silver What? What? I'll be down in a minute. A boat just took a whole yeah. bridge out. They had nothing to distract them from each other. <laughs> yeah. It just ended up with domestic violence. Yeah. I, like, I should, this should not be possible. I'm just sitting there. So like, I'm saying there are positives. Yeah, they're positive. Imagine if you didn't have it all. <laughs> yeah. We just had to live them up. <laughs> You'd be tough. No wonder everybody was hitting each other back in the day. <laughs> We didn't have boat. We didn't have boat wrecks to That's distract what happened. us. By the way, everybody, your grandpa did it. All right. So that's what everybody was doing 55 years ago. It's because they had nothing to distract. If them. only they just got mad and then they had to sit in the same room. So with all of this to, to distract us, yeah. Like what's Diddy's issue then? No, like what, I don't why, know. I can't. He's speak got the that. same distractions no, we got. I got it. You just look. I'm not saying that there are those that are not creeps. We're still creating creeps, and we're still creating domestic abusers for that matter. But I shouldn't be able to sit in my office just randomly and at 1:45 in the morning. I see a tweet, and it says a bridge has collapsed in Baltimore, and all I got to do is go on Twitter and 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 do a Twitter search for Baltimore, and I immediately can just watch the whole thing fall down, like yeah. within seconds. Like that shouldn't. Like oh, that's I, a wild. You know, you know what I was talking about in there? I said, bro, tell me there's already the YouTube of the conspiracy. Oh, oh, I, this is a bridge can't collapse like that. I saw how the hell heavy was that boat? Who were in the seven cars? I'm telling you, I, it's already out there. Uh, no, within Somebody minutes last night, I was already, I didn't see it on YouTube, but it was already all over Twitter. This is suspicious. Yep. Highly suspicious. Cause if you watch it, bro, how heavy is that? boat? like, did the, it just hit it perfect to collapse. It, it didn't Dude, hit the, it didn't a, hit a, it's a pillar. A Dude. boat versus a pillar, the boat wins all the time. Yeah, it just hit a pillar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's like if you ran okay. your if you ran hey. if you ran keep your that third eye open, bro. <laughs> keep that, okay. Highly suspicious. Keep that third eye. It was. And you, I, I, I don't. I look again. Stop acting like experts on boats and pillars. I don't know. <laughs> but they said they said what I read. What I read. From, How fast is the boat going? Too. It lost power and they just lost total control over it. That's it, what happened. The boat. It. Yeah. Yeah. They lost power and they just lost total control and that bitch just went right into it. And it was a game, set, match. Like, if you ran a You got to jump out that boat if you lose total control. No, because right? you're, you're fine in the boat. Yeah, the boat you, stays on the, the water. You're oh, as of this morning, the, the people on the boat were still on the boat. Yeah. Wait, They're just hanging out on the boat. boat. Yeah, but yeah. there was people on it. Did you hear the worst part? There was a construction crew 
working on the bridge, like, oh, you know, no. doing night work. Oh, yeah. They're up there like, dur, 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 you know, doing one of those no. things. Oh, no. And they just fall straight into the water. Oh. And we ain't never going to see that them That really again. looked like something from, like, End of Days. Like, or well, one of those it, like, I was. Ap- apocalypse movies. Well, you're, I mean, if you're trying to find silver linings, if you'd rather be at one thirty in the morning than one thirty in the afternoon. Hell yeah. Because that bridge was mostly empty. I, like, watched it. I know. It was it's mostly terrifying. empty. When they say somebody survived. Yeah. Well, that's going to really help the conspiracies. Highly suspicious. Right? <laughs> yeah. Why did this person know to have a parachute? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of highly suspicious yeah. stuff happening. And, 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 and then you got the Joker, like, standing on the other side. <laughs> it's rough. Where's it's a wild. Batman wi- now? It's a wild <laughs> world out there. Where's the Batman now? It's a wild world out right. there. It's a wild world. All right. See you. I feel like that's enough. I feel like we've done enough for one day. So I'll see you know. later. I'll see you later. That's Chris Vernon. He'll be in Jerry West's old office <laughs> at noon. When we come back, John Calipari, you remember him, he used to coach at Memphis. Now he's at Kentucky. He held his radio show last night and uh, sounded humble and eager to return for a 16th year at Kentucky. Whether he'll get to or not remains undetermined. We'll talk about that next it's the Gary Parish Show presented by Ortho South. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Let's face it. There's a lot of trash talk in basketball, but the great teams let their performance do the talking. Like Ford F-150 with Pro Power on board. A class-exclusive industry-first feature that turns your truck into a mobile generator and leaves the competition speechless. Ford F-150, official truck of the Grizzlies. Greatness starts here at your Mid-South Ford dealer. Classes full-size pickups under 8,500 pounds, GBWR. Now for a limited time, the new $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps are here at Sonic. Who could deny a crispy chicken tender with bold flavors like hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja? And we can't forget the crisp lettuce and melty cheese to make the perfect bite. Wrap yourself up with some TLC, tender, love, and chicken for only $1.99. Sonic $1.99 Crispy Tender Wraps. Tax not included, limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins. Hey Grizzlies fans, after exciting hoops and a lucky night of gaming, where do you rest your head? Look no further than Southland Casino Hotel, proud sponsor of the Memphis Grizzlies. Our high-rise hotel is the epitome of luxury and comfort. Picture this, you've just finished an evening of gaming and dining, so you head on over to one of our 300 rooms to end the night. Choose from standard suite and presidential suite, plus we're pet friendly and offer mobility scooters for rent. It's a seamless experience for everyone. And don't miss the Main Street Exchange, right in the heart of our casino lobby. Whether you're craving a snack or need a souvenir of your stay, we've got you covered. From polo shirts to shot glasses, take a piece of the Southland excitement home with you. So come stay and play at Southland Casino Hotel, where every moment is designed for your enjoyment. Book your hotel stay by calling 833-703-3350 or visit online at southlandcasinohotel.com slash hotel. Guests must be 21 years of age or older to check in at hotel. Must be 21 plus, play responsibly. For help quitting, call 800-522-4700. Unforeseen and unscheduled, and Ortho South understands this better than anyone. Since your injuries don't make appointments, you don't need to either. That's because Ortho South welcomes walk-ins during the weekdays and the evenings and even on Saturdays. So next time an unforeseen injury makes an unscheduled appearance in your life, visit orthosouth.org to find your nearest urgent care location. Just walk in, and Ortho South will take care of everything, especially you. Learn more at orthosouth.org. That's OrthoSouth at OrthoSouth.org. Now I got five more things you need to know. Number one. 
John Calipari held his weekly radio show last night as scheduled. He did not take calls, but he did talk for an hour and seemed like a man who is eager to return for a 16th year as the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats. He did say that he had not met with Mitch Barnhart, his athletic director, yet, but that he planned to do that probably today, if not today, tomorrow. CJ, it appears that John Calabari is going to return for a 16th year at Kentucky. If you were in charge of Kentucky, if you were a Kentucky fan, would you like this? Would you approve of it? Or would you be ready to just move on? If I was a fan, I'd be ready to move on. Right. But fan and administrator are, are different. Right. Um, fan, like, it it can't always be about what happens in June. Right. When when the draft happens. It can't always be about what happens in February when we're having all the, the Kentucky All-Stars. He loves the – throw up there and then in the off season when you're having some very celebrities come through which is really really cool and then you have one of every single year if not the top class one of the top classes in the nation eventually that's got to amount to something i think bare minimum at kentucky in like a four-year five-year span three trips two trips to a sweet 16 throwing an elite eight a final four as well i think those are good for kentucky it's been a while since they've had that as an administrator you get you get one more year man I can, I, can, I can stave them all for one more year. But if you don't improve on the postseason performance in that one year, not only are they going to be on your ass, but they're going to be on mine also. And I can't have them be on mine. I think that's where we're at. I think he and Mitch will meet, and he's going to make staff changes. Mitch will say, you've got to change your staff mm -hmm. up. And if I were at Kentucky and you've got all these resources, I would hire a general manager to work in the portal and help you roster build. I would hire an offensive coordinator. I'd hire a defensive coordinator. Like I would invest in the all the stuff around John and then tell John you're the face of this thing and you're going to be the um you're going to coach energy and effort and um, you're going to manage our locker room, but the actual basketball stuff like we're going to modernize this. Yeah. And and this 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 is the person who's going to help you do it and this is the person who's going to help you do it and I would think of it more like a football program as opposed to a basketball program. There are basketball programs that run that way. Really? Oh, yeah. I I, um, it, I didn't know. It, it was really eye-opening for me, having been John Calipari's beat writer for four years um, before I got the job at CBS, because really what that meant was I had kind of only been in practices at the University of Memphis, and John was very hands-on. Like whether it was Derek Kellogg or Tony Barbie or Steve Rockefeller or any of his assistant coaches, I rarely saw them do anything. Some of them didn't even come to practice very often. John had did everything. And I just assumed, well, that must be the way it goes. Then you go to these other practices and you watch the head coach just sort of walks around and monitors. But one assistant coach is working with bigs over here and another assistant coach is working yeah. with guards over here. And the head coach is just sort of monitoring more like a football coach does. And um, if you ever look and say – um, Steve Forbes huddles at Wake Forest, you'll see a guy who's an assistant coach with the dry erase board. Mm -hmm. Like Forbes is not drawing up that play. Jason Shea is drawing up that play because Jason is trusted. Like you're our sideline out of bounds, our baseline out of bounds. You you handle those situations, and so he does. And so if I were at Kentucky, that's what I would do with John now. I'd say you're going to still be the face and the recruiter, and, and um, yeah, you're in charge of – the program, but we're going to supplement you with people we think can help you modernize um, roster building and modernize uh, style of play. Because as recently as last night, he's saying things like, "Well, now you just wonder, you know, do do you, can you win with all these freshmen? Do you have to get older?" Well, people have been saying that for three or four years now. Yeah, the idea that you're just now catching on to that—it's crazy to me. Like Jay Wright knew this two years ago. So why do you, and he's been retired for two years. So why are you just now publicly bringing this up? It's just weird. But I, I do think he'll get a 16th year. Um, you know, they'll enroll a great recruiting class. They'll probably be preseason top 15 again. And then we'll see where it goes. But it'll be interesting because everything will come down to like next March. And if they, it, it won't even matter if they get a top four seed again, which by definition means you had a pretty good year. Yeah. If he loses in the first round again, they'll get him next year. His next bad year or bad tournament will be his last, but I do think he'll get one more year. We'll see. Number two. I can't hear. Oh, I just hit it. <laughs> number, number two. There we go. Just cue me. I don't I know what's you. going on over here. I, I can't hear anything. I got you. My fault. Number two. Caitlin Clark, uh, 
played her last game in Carver Hawkeye Arena last night because of the nature of the NCAA tournament. Um, you know that, that you you play opening rounds at home. Now they'll go to neutral site stuff for the Sweet 16. But she is in the Sweet 16. It was an ugly game last night. Played a, 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 the lower scoring than what you would anticipate, more physical than what you'd anticipate. I'm not going to lie and tell you I watched every minute of it or any mini of minute of it other than the highlights because I was on a plane last night. But I gather officiating was a part of the story. So <laughs> I would, the foul, whenever there's officiating issues, we go straight to the free throw discrepancy. Right. I think I was shot like 33 and West Virginia might have shot in the double digits. Right. Maybe. I watched a large chunk of that game right. and thought to myself, oh, this is Steph Curry's Davidson. Right. Where if this player, if that player isn't scoring the ball and just gifting you stuff, nobody else can create on Iowa. Right. No, nobody could create on Davidson. If Caitlin Clark isn't throwing you the ball and you just catch it and go up for the layup or catch it and go up for the jump shot, nobody's doing things like taking a dribble, God right. forbid, and, and setting up somebody else or creating for themselves. It is all on Caitlin Clark. West Virginia had a great game game plan for mucking things up. Uh, that's what they do at West Virginia, apparently. They're really good de defensively in the women's game. So. And they were tied late. Yeah. And so that would have been real damaging for the NCAA women's tournament to lose Caitlin Clark before the Sweet 16. So I'm can sure. You, can you open this eye right here, the third one? Hmm. Notice how Iowa – Found a way to beat West Virginia. Sure. And all of a sudden, LSU started getting all of the foul calls against MTSU. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're headed there. The, the people the people knew. They don't. They're like, yo, we cannot have MTSU versus West Virginia. We've got to find a way to make sure we get Iowa and And that uh, would be LSU. an Elite Eight matchup. Yeah. And I do think, because you get into these conversations now because Caitlin's such a big deal and Juju's such a big deal and Angel's such a big deal. You know, people debating like is the women's tournament bigger than the men's it's not but i do think there are things about the women's tournament that can be bigger than the men's i don't think it's crazy to if you gave if you let me hand pick the women's final four i could create a women's final four that's more interesting than the win men's final four maybe not better or a bigger draw but more interesting um um so I think Caitlin Clark and Iowa against Angel Reese and LSU is one of those things where on the day that that game is played, if it's played, yeah. that yeah. will be the biggest basketball game played that day. It will resonate more than any other basketball game played that day. Um, and I do think that's probably – LSU against Iowa is probably the biggest basketball game matchup we could get in either NCAA tournament. Like if you said we could have Iowa LSU on the women's side or whatever you want to imagine on the men's side, I think Iowa LSU on the women's side is more interesting because of the history and because of Caitlin and Angel and obviously Kim Mulkey and we'll see what happens with this Washington Post story. But mm -hmm. that could elevate the attention surrounding her and that and her program to take it to another level, depending what's on this story whenever it comes out. So big time win for women's basketball last night to not lose Caitlin Clark before the Sweet 16. She advances and uh, now in the Sweet 16 and perhaps headed on a collision course with LSU I'm once again. I'm trying to to think, uh, figure out where everybody is on the women's bracket. I was trying to pull my bracket up because while I that matchup, I need it. I need LSU versus Iowa this year. Sure. I need it real bad. I, I would also really like Juju versus UCLA part two, three, oh, yeah, yeah. four. I would also like UConn in South Carolina. I'd like hell LSU in South Carolina. Like sure. there, there are so many great matchups yeah. to pick from on the women's side. It's just it's, it's no, so it's fun. great. It's it's as interesting as it's ever been. And if we get LSU Iowa again, then that's obviously that's that's big time, big time stuff. Number three, Euphoria season three mm. has been put on ice indefinitely. Mm. I know Jess watches Euphoria. Nope, you got, I don't. I don't do a lot of drama stuff. I understand. Um, so it's. HBO show about troubled high school kids. Yeah. And when it starts, Zendaya was kind of a big deal, but the rest of the cast were just, you didn't know any of them. Well, now the problem for them is these these actors and actresses have become such big deals that they can't fit it into their schedule. They can't, it's because it's like an ensemble cast. It's not like Zendaya's the star and then there's secondary characters. Like Sidney Sweeney's just as big of a star as Zendaya and, and this person's just because there's a bunch of characters in this thing. 
And at least Zendaya, Sidney Sweeney, and the Jacob Elordi, whatever his name is, yeah. those they're like movie stars now. So they the demand for them is higher than it's ever been. The money they're being offered to do other things is higher than it's ever been. So when you start a show like Euphoria for HBO, you're like, you've got a certain budget and you're not having to pay these actors incredible amounts of money because they're mostly unknown actors at the time. Yeah. But now Sidney Sweeney is one of the most famous people working in Hollywood, Zendaya as well. So Euphoria is like, well, this is what we can pay you for season three. And some studios saying, well, we can pay you 18 times that to do this movie. Well, what are you doing? Well, I, 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 18 times anything is the one I'm doing. So suddenly you got Zendaya's got an offer to do this movie for this amount of money. Sidney Sweeney's got an offer to do this movie for this amount of money. And they can't find time to do Euphoria. So it's like they just finally decided. There was one report yesterday said they just canceled the show. It's just over. Not because they don't want to finish it, but because they can't. it's no longer doable given that the, the actors involved cost too much and don't have the time. But HBO pushed back on that and said, no, we're just we're going to try to get it together in 2025. But for 2024, they just this is where it became news. They, they told their entire cast, don't worry about us. Go pursue whatever you want to pursue. You don't have to, well, I want to do this movie, but when are we supposed to be shooting season three of Euphoria? Go do whatever you want to do, and we'll reconvene in 2025. So if you were expecting to watch season three of Euphoria anytime soon, uh, I got bad news. You're not going to watch it anytime soon, and I guess there's at least a chance you're not going to watch it ever. Number four. Shohei Otani spoke to the media yesterday, read a statement. It was about 12 minutes. And I, I should say, um, he had a prepared statement. He didn't seem to read it as much as he glanced at it every once in a while just to maybe keep him on track. But he was pretty clear. Like, he didn't take questions, but he didn't leave much wiggle room. He said he did not uh, gamble on sports, including baseball, has never instructed anybody to gamble on sports for him, including baseball, and that he did not cover his translator's uh, gambling debts that he had no idea this was even a thing until a few days ago. And the truth is that the translator has stolen money from him to cover gambling debts, and he had no knowledge of it and was not involved in any way whatsoever. Do you believe him? Recklessly speculating. Mm -hmm. I believe some of it. Mm -hmm. I believe that like he's got a relationship. I believe he didn't gamble on anything. Right. I believe that. I believe the translator did that, and then his – Buddy comes to him and says, because I think they're, they're buddies. Right. I think they're friends. Buddy comes to him like, yo, I'm in trouble, trouble. Can you help me out? It's like, yeah, I, I got you. Right. Here's, here's the money to pay it. Just don't tell anybody. And then when it comes to light, it is, hey, you got to take you got to take all of it. You can't tell them that I paid this debt. Right. And so that that's what everybody's doing right now. I don't believe he's had contact with the, the bookie right. either. I think he just gave his friend the money to pay the, the gambling debt. And now everybody knows about it. It's like, ah, no, I, I didn't gamble. I didn't give him money. He's, in fact, not only did I not give it to him, he stole from me. That's that, how he got it. That, that might be true. Um, the thing that would make me, and I'm sure like there's smart people, high lawyers and everybody involved in this stuff. It's just that what he is saying is that I did not wire this money to anybody. I had nothing to do with it. Well, like the law enforcement officials are involved in this now. And they will be able to, with great detail, figure out you know the IP address where this stuff came from, who was on the computer, who logged in, who where was Shohei Otani at this time. So if he is lying, and this is the only thing that makes me think he might be telling the truth, because it's a mostly not believable story. But the only thing that makes me think he might be telling the truth is that if he's lying, they'll catch him, I would think. Because they'll be able to – because what he – what the interpreter said initially was that Shohei, like, you know, sat down and he made these these wire transfers for me. They were for me, not for him, but he made them. Well, if that's true, they should be able to be able to prove that. Pretty like we can tell, like, it's the same way they solve all these murders by pulling people's phones and computers. They can tell everything you've been doing, everything where you were, where it pinged, what you were looking at, what you were doing. I, I just think if he would have been a little more vague yesterday in this prepared statement 
if if he actually had the stuff to hide that some people think that he does. I don't want to vouch for him. I don't know. I don't I don't know where this is going. But that he was so definitive in saying, I didn't know about this. I didn't do this. I didn't have anything to do with this. I only learned about it. Given the the amount of people that are now investigating this and the number of agencies that are now looking into this, it just seems like it, that'd be a bad stuff to lie about yesterday in such a public way, which makes me think he might really come out of this as a victim. Uh, but I, I think that the the game plan might also be, hey, if we can just muck this thing up. Right. Because it's – you got to prove I'm guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Right. And that that is a tough thing to do if the bookie and you, the the translator, and I have the same If y'all story. keep your same – if, if y'all keep, keep your story the same tight. Story. They, yeah. But we saw with Barry Bonds, right? right. My, my man did jail time for Barry Bonds. Yeah, but what I'm – yeah, but what I'm saying is even – if the if we reach a point where Shohei says I didn't do it, and the tra- the interpreter translator says he didn't do it, and the bookie says I've never talked to Shohei Otani in my life, they should still if he did even on the low get on a computer and be the one who made this trend, they should be able to tell he was the one who did that, um, or have a a high level of certainty that he's the one who did that, which would. Put me in a place where this ain't the type of thing I'm going to lie about, which, again, makes me lean toward he might actually be telling the truth. I don't know. Either way, big scandal continues to overshadow the start of the MLB season, and we'll update you on it when we can. Number five. Just a nightmare last night in Baltimore, Maryland. I was actually up late because my schedules are so out of whack now. And I see the tweet come across, and it's like – Bridge has collapsed in Baltimore, um, uh, according to footage obtained by CNN or whatever. So I'm like, okay. But they weren't linking the footage, not initially. It was just like, we've got it, but we ain't showing it yet. And, of course, you go onto Twitter and you just – It's there. It's there. And it looked not real. I was like, oh, my God. I went back and watched it again. And you just – I'll be fascinated to – because we'll see this eventually – Thank God it was 1.30 in the morning, not 1.30 in the afternoon, because the bridge was mostly empty. Not entirely, but mostly. But there's like, you know, semis. There's mm-hmm. trucks going across it. And you see the boat coming. We have the video if you want to show. If, if people haven't seen it and you're comfortable seeing it, we're comfortable showing it. I guess it's being shown everywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's watch a boat. Let's watch a boat <laughs> knock a bridge down. Oh, my gosh. I mean, the whole thing. So what? What we're lucky about is that there weren't that many vehicles on the bridge at the time. Yeah. But if you watch, like there's, I watched for three minutes before the boat hit, and there's like constantly semis, and they're just lucky. You know, if you'd, uh, like there, there'll, be a, there'll be a truck driver who gets interviewed, and he'll say something like, um, yeah, I was going to stop and get gas, and I didn't. And if I would have, I would have, you know. So right. There's always going to be these stories right. of, like how close of a call that was. Sadly, tragically, there was a crew working on the bridge. I think it was a six-person crew. Yeah. They're doing like construction work on the bridge, and yeah. they they are unaccount. They were, as of this morning, they were unaccounted for. And obviously, temperature is not great. Um, strong currents. It's yeah. it probably is what it is. But um, early indications are that the boat lost power, the cargo ship lost power, and then the people on board had no control over it whatsoever. I read somewhere, and I'm way out over my skis here. I don't know anything about cargo boats and rivers and bridges or nothing, but just very surface level, I was reading this morning. It's like they anticipate everything that could possibly happen, and you are under instructions if something like this were to happen. Big cargo ship, you lose power, you lose control of it, and you're still going with the current, So the bu- but you have no control over this this vessel anymore. You're supposed to drop an anchor. Like just drop, just you got to stop yourself. Yeah, right in the as opposed to, in other words, that should not happen. Right. Once you realize you've lost control of the boat, you're supposed to drop Drop an ankle, ankle. and and that will stop you. That's that's what I read. Just a very surface level thing. So it looks like there could be some human error here too, but just a just a scary thing. Like we live on a river, we have a bridge that could have happened to us. Yeah, that could happen anywhere. Just a nightmare. Nightmare situation. Drop so, anchor call because you said you watched it was a three minute video. Yeah. So call 
nine one one. Be like, hey, we we lost control. You got to get everybody off. Of there are. It, it appears that there were several minutes where it was clear we don't have control of this and we're headed for this bridge. Yeah. What happened in those minutes is unclear, but I'm certain we'll find out. Either way, just a scary thing. Uh, there's going to be a death toll. Yeah. Hopefully, it's as small as possible. Be back with GP's carry out. Today, we have two very special guests on our program, introducing Lem hey. and Lime. Hello. For Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Thanks for having us. What is Starry Lemon Lime Soda? It's a crisp, clear burst of lemon lime flavor, and it's caffeine free. Between us, one of you must be a little more important to Starry than the other. Who is it? We're both important. So we could just as easily be Starry Lime Lemon Soda. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, I like it. So you saying hip hop could be hop hip? Works for me. Starry Lemon Lime Soda. Starry hits different. He's looking for the hot hand. Jaron got the step, Woo! got the flush. There's no layups on that one. Electric, rowdy, intense. They bring the same mentality that they bring anywhere into the building. If they were mad about something, they're bringing it in. If they were happy about something, they're bringing it in. So we need all that energy times a thousand. We were without internet from 11 in the morning until what ended up being around 8 o'clock at night. I'd be the first to go in an apocalypse. I just would not even know what to do. Chris is over here like, who needs internet anyway? Let's just be one with the land. And I'm like, frantic. I'm like, I can't do anything. Tune in to the Jessica Benson Show with CJ Hurt live every weekday at 8 a.m. on YouTube at Grind City Media and the official Grind City Media app. We know there's only one team you want to watch, and Bally Sports is the place to get your Grizzlies. Experience the comebacks, the buzzer beaters, the can't-miss Memphis-made moments live. Bally Sports keeps the grind going before and after the game, too, with Pete, Brevin, Fish, and Chris on Grizzlies Live. Watch Grizzlies basketball all season long with Bally Sports and streaming on the Bally Sports app. Bally Sports, home of the only team you want to watch. It's time for GP's Carryout. One final segment filled with stuff to take with you. It's not everything you need to know, but it's most of it. What did we learn today? Welcome back to Gary Parrish Show presented by Ortho South. We're inside the Built Ford Tough Studio downtown Memphis. Let's wrap it up with GP's Carryout. What did we learn today? Whole bunch of stuff, but we mostly focused on... The Grizzlies in the opening segment. Another loss last night on the road in Denver. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, they're the reigning champs. They're first place in the West. 15 and a half point underdogs. Lose by 25 after going down 39-24 in the first quarter. But uh, now only 10 more games to go. And the next, hey, two of them are against the Lakers. That's the people like that, don't they? Yep. People enjoy that. Assuming two- LeBron plays. We'll have to see. As we said, he is listed as doubtful. For tonight's game, tomorrow night will be the second night of a back-to-back. He's got that ankle injury. So the King will be here in Memphis tomorrow. We'll get to see if he plays or not. Fingers, are are you the type of person who wants LeBron James to play because he's LeBron James and it's an opportunity to see one of the greatest, if not greatest, basketball players of all time? Or LeBron James not playing helps the Grizzlies. So sit down, LeBron James. Where are you at? I am pro watching the best basketball Me players too. as much as I can. Also, LeBron James not playing might not help the Grizzlies yeah. because of the, the draft stuff. Yeah, so let's put LeBron on the court. Yeah. Let's get a nice performance yeah. from our king. And uh, if it happens to be another Grizzlies loss at home, eh, we're used to it at yeah. this point, and it, it, it helps our lottery eyes. So um, we're not going to root for the Lakers, but no. we, we're not going to be heartbroken. If LeBron plays in the Lakers win. Is that where we're at? That's where we are. I think that's where I'm at. What's today's biggest game? Biggest game. Let's go. Lakers Bucks. Mm. Tonight, it's TNT 630 tip. Again, LeBron James listed as doubtful. Milwaukee, nine and a half point favorite. Total is 231.5. How are you going to act? I will take the over on the total. 
and I will take the Lakers to cover. Over on the total, Lakers to cover. This isn't coming back on me, right? This is all on me. This is all on Bennett. Yep. You're not, yep. I would never hold yep. you responsible. That's, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm confident not, in it. I'm not going to hold you responsible for making picks. Bennett is, is the only person that gets held responsible for making picks. So you've got the Lakers. You've got the over. Yep. We'll see how it goes. What are we watching on TV? CBS Sports Network, all night tonight. They'll have uh, shows getting us ready for the Sweet 16. I'm looking forward to getting back up to New York tomorrow. Um, flying out, be in studio Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday before heading to Phoenix for the Final Four uh, next week. Uh, fortunate that we've got an amazing crew so I can come home for you know a day and a half, see my family, and uh, sleep in my own bed. I guess that's great. <laughs> I guess that's great. I'd like to be in it a little more than I, I was. I was only in it for like three hours. But, uh, yeah, if you're looking to get caught up, get ready for the Sweet 16. Turn on CBS Sports Network tonight. And my buddies Brent Stover and everybody else uh, will get you ready. What's the best thing we've read? Well, um, over at CBSSports.com, we've got all your NCAA tournament coverage over there. Right now, NCAA tournament all first weekend team. Uh, Kyle Boone has uh, posted that at CBSSports.com. It's on the homepage. So if you are interested, if you need a refresher course on who's really been starring through the first two rounds of the 2024 NCAA tournament, go find that CBSSports.com. What's on tap for tomorrow? Well, tomorrow be Wednesday. Mm -hmm. That means Mike Wallace is going to join me. I'll nice. talk Grizzlies with him. He'll help us get ready for Grizz Lakers inside FedEx Forum. Will LeBron play or not? We should have a better idea this time tomorrow. Mike Wallace in the first hour. Looking forward to it already. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to enjoy mine. We'll meet you back here tomorrow at 10. Till then, be careful, be kind, be good. Rep your hood.